Hi everyone, this is Summit from Chico Hospital for Cats, and I am here with another brand new episode with my friend and coworker Bree. Hi Bree. Hello. So today we do want to talk about we want to continue the series of enrichments for our cats. Uh, last episode we talked a little bit about the outdoors enrichment and harness and leash, and how you can walk your cat outside safely. So if you are curious about that, that episode is still available. And today we're gonna talk something different it's not more it's not so much physical enrichment but maybe i want to say more mental right so we're going to talk about the food puzzles and how we can use them effectively and why on our furry friends so i want to start with asking first of all the question what is a food (laughs) puzzle brie so a food puzzle is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's a, any type of puzzle or an object that can hold food and requires that your kitty has to figure out how to get that food out of it. Um, and there are different there are different types of those puzzles come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, sometimes they're more well hidden in the puzzle than others. Sometimes they're more obvious. Sometimes they're mobile and sometimes they're stationary. So there's lots of different kitty puzzles out there for all the different kitty personalities out there. Yeah, like uh, the m- mobile one probably would be one of those balls that have like little holes in them, so they have to roll them around. And as the ball around. Ra- you know, rolls around the house, the treats start falling off mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah. And then the stationary one, I guess we can give an example of those bowls that are just a little bit deeper or narrow, so they have to use their paws and try to find a way to somehow pull them out. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're imagining too when we say stationary? Yeah, definitely. And at those ones, usually I find usually the stationary ones are ones where they can visually see their food too. It's just mm-hmm. they're... It, it makes it more difficult to, for them to get to it, but they don't see it. Whereas the mobile ones, like you said, are usually like in some type of ball or something where they can hear the food rattle, mm-hmm. but they don't get to see it as well. So it's more like a transparent plastic kind of thing, the stationary mm-hmm. one, so or, they can see through. Or just like the solid, like how they'll have like a like a flat surface, and then maybe there's some like figures jutting up or like different shapes. Different and figures shapes. And, Thank you. Shapes yeah. is a word I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> So there are lots of options out there, and it's important, I guess, not to give up right away when you try some of these and your cat just walks away, right? (laughs) (laughs) And um, I guess I can criticize myself in that part, too, that I did not put lots of time and effort into uh, trying to find the right puzzle for my cats yet. But I know we all think about a little bit more exercise and maybe like weight loss or something like that related to this uh, food puzzle topic. But I do want you to tell us a little bit more about what we found out with our research as far as other parts of benefits to this. Yeah, so a lot of people do think of puzzles with food for weight loss, but it's not just for, although it can be used in that case, there's a lot more times it's used to help with their mental stimulation because it really, um, it gives an indoor kitty something to stalk and hunt. So it kind of brings out those embedded like uh, hunting instincts. Like you'll see them play with toy mice or balls in the house as well. And then it gives, uh, they were saying that most behaviorists agree that um, behaviors in cats generally stem for boredom and frustration, um, which can also be alleviated with these toys that are making them work mentally harder to get what they want. Yeah, so you had this um, interesting thing you shared with me about a cat behaviorist. Would you want to add that too as well? So we had a quote uh, from a cat behavioralist named Carol Wilborn, who started her work with felines in the 70s um, in a book that says, it's called, We Have Learned That They Are Not So Very Different From Us. And like us, they need new challenges. She said that in her research, she found out that the lack of mental stimulation can result in a 30% loss of brain function over time in both animals and humans. Yeah, so that sounded quite interesting to me because basically what you're saying is when we are lazy physically, we know the consequences, but there's also kind of some sort of mental laziness here going on that it's causing you to lose some functions in your brain. And that's just so scary to hear. (laughs) (laughs) And we we don't want our cat to just turn into a vegetable cat, I guess. Well, it actually, the other fun fact I found was that food puzzles were um, actually started and originally created to provide enrichment for captive animals. So like laboratory animals they were running tests on or zoo animals who just didn't have the access to that everyday stimulation that they're used to when they're out, you know, living in their own environment. What I 
found when I researched a little bit is that I found also another research done by UC Davis in um, California. They have another um, behaviorist there. His name is Michael Delgado. And uh, he found out that he, I believe he did this research on about 3,192 people. And he found out that 30% of the participants do use actually food puzzle. I thought that was pretty high. 30% is like every one in three people. Yeah. It's kind of a little bit more unknown, I thought, but maybe that's a good, good I'd number. I agree with that, that thought process. I wouldn't think it would be as high because I feel like... Yeah. I, I guess I would expect like 15% yeah. or something. But I'm like, I don't have a food. We were kind of doing a poll the other day downstairs <laughs> after we talked about this topic. And I'm, I would say it's probably close to the half here. Don't. I'm like, I know I don't. I've got a lot of cats, but I don't have any food toys. So Yeah. And so he, he did this research on 3,000 people. 30% turned out that they actually use food puzzle some sort. And then 18% of them tried, but then stopped using them. And then, unfortunately, 52% did not try it or heard even about it at all. And that's one of the reasons we would like to do this episode today as well, to make it a little bit more aware that there are yeah. food puzzles out there, and they're quite helpful. And the same research, he also asked people why they stopped using it, that 18% mm -hmm. of people. And I think it's a funny result because everybody blamed their cat. <laughs> <laughs> So, so they said their cat uh, was either too lazy or they were never figuring out how to get the food out of the puzzle. And I think if they keep trying and they get maybe just sometimes a little bit out of it, I think that's still helpful. So the goal here is not for them to get a lot of food out of it. Yeah. Well, and that comes into play with what you were talking about, too, the different types of food puzzles. Because I think some of them, like I said, the ones that are mobile, the balls are sometimes... They're, they're smaller holes because they're moving around so much. You don't want all the food coming out at once or else, you know, there goes your stimulation. And those are those those I could see animals giving up on earlier than some of the other ones where you can actually visually see the food. And they're like, I know it's there. <laughs> I feel like maybe they're more inclined to go for it since they can actually see it. <laughs> I can smell it. I can see it, but I can't just lick it. <laughs> But I thought maybe it's important also for the cat to feel maybe just a little bit hungry, too. I mean, if a cat yeah. is free fed and gets just treats offered throughout the day, and then you just offer a yeah. food puzzle at the end of the day, I'm not sure if that full belly, cozy yeah. kitty is really interested in that food puzzle, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I would see that because I'm tr yeah, trying to transition the cat onto one of my cats onto a different food right now but I can't feed it to the rest of my cats. And so it's just kind of hit or miss when I find her. It's she will, like, you, I'll put down food. And if she's had her fill, she has no interest in it. Whereas if she hasn't eaten yet, I can tell, and she just gobbles it right up. So availability is, I'm sure, plays a role in how interested these kitties continue to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this because the other common reason for not ever even trying to use food puzzle, according to this research on UC Davis, was also to have either another dog in the household or multiple cats. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they all had different diets or weight goals or, you know, def different activity levels. But again, the research says it's not an obstacle for not using food puzzles. You can either use them under supervision or you can use like baby gates or other dog free zones so your cat can still enjoy having those puzzles and a little bit of, you know, mental stimulation yeah. time every day. So that all being said, this food puzzle thing also doesn't have to be really complicated because uh, we also found out that there are some easy ways to get it done if you don't have the uh, chance to buy all these fancy stuff or if you just are not really wanting to invest in it yet before you are sure your cat is into it. So would you like to tell us a little bit about what those ways can be? Yeah, we did find, um, you know, there's actually quite a few things that probably everyone has in their home that we could just go ahead and use as a trial or, um, you know, a long for full full time if you wanted to um, a lot of stuff that there's one you could do some you could have a cardboard box and you can cut holes um, off to hold cups mm -hmm. make sure the cups are narrow so they can't just face plant and eat of the cuff but they have to work with different size objects to get their paws in and different textures to get on the side there's some like with a can it looks like with the ridges like so they kind of have to 
use a different approach. Um, we've seen egg cartons where you can flip them either way, actually. Um, and you can put the little kernels of some dry food or treats in there, so they have to dig those out as well. So there are different ways to utilize them at home um, without having to go out and purchase something from a store as well. Yeah, and we have a little picture here in front of me that they even just use a, I don't know what you call it, a piece of wood here and sort of glued some random used uh, cups on top of it to put some food in it that are a little bit harder to get to the yeah. food, I guess, like a yogurt cup or something like that. Yeah, so definitely you can be, if you feel creative and <laughs> artsy crafty, you could also just go and create your own do-it-yourself um, feeding puzzle. And uh, if you would like to take a couple, you know, levels up, then you can dive into the market and find <laughs> even more big, bigger ones. I've seen, when I looked for this episode, I have seen food puzzles like platforms where there is like five, six different stuff in one oh. one thing. And it's just huge, this huge playground full of like <laughs> labyrinths of food, you know. <laughs> and so you can definitely go crazy on that too, just like in anything else that's cat related yeah, if you want to. So about this episode, I believe that's pretty much what we have to share. If you do want to look more into it, you know, the common known... Uh, websites where you can shop for your pet products you can type in the search words for a food puzzle or you know feline focused food puzzles or whatever you yeah. want to say and then you guys can keep an eye out as well on our uh, our facebook the chico hospital for cats and our instagram because we'll be posting some pictures of some products we carry as well as some that some of our staff and clients use with their own kitties uh, some videos so you can get idea of what's out there and how you go about using them Perfect. So let's not forget all these animals are originally programmed to hunt and capture. find their food. Yeah, hunt and capture. And we sort of took that away from them. And we do have to provide them something in return for being with us 24-7. So <laughs> this is one of the most effective ways. Uh, give it a try if you're curious. And if you get any results, feel free to share it with us. It would be interesting to read or watch it yeah all right so thank you brie for joining us again absolutely and um we will continue this enrichment uh topic with other parts of it in the coming episodes and for now we're saying goodbye and don't forget to follow us on chicocats.com slash podcast or wherever you like to listen to your podcast thank you bye-bye <laughs>